work program is unlocking what one could call a dead asset in poor communities. Labor that is not used is gone. Labor that you haven't used today, you cannot use tomorrow. Uh, and we have this incredible resource of labor in poor communities that is unutilized. Unlocking that labor is an enormous economic opportunity and deploying that labor to address the challenges of poverty is an enormous economic opportunity and a social opportunity. The necessary ingredients for unlocking this unused resource is the labor itself, which is unlocked by giving it a value. And partly giving it a value is through the wages paid, yes. But it's also the social value that is derives from useful work. A research report on one of the, the in-depth report on one of the CWP sites argued that in the CWP what you see is a decommodification of labor that enhances the meaning of the work for participants. That the fact that the community values the work adds to the value experienced by those who are delivering that outcome. One of the features of unemployment is of feeling useless to society, of feeling surplus to requirements, of being unutilized, unused, and useless. In the CWP, because the work performed is socially useful, it, the participants are validated not only by their participation in work, but also by the fact that the community embraces the work that is being done and that it has an ad added meaning in that sense. The second key ingredient for unlocking this unutilized resource is access to capital. Usually we talk about capital in a different sense. In this context, it's the, it's the public capital that is required to provide the tools and materials that's required to create social value. And that is part of the deal in CWP. Yes, 65% of the costs go to labor, but the balance of costs can go to tools and materials. And those tools and materials relate to whatever work the community has decided is valuable. If that work relates to irrigation infrastructure, if it relates to water infrastructure, it, you know, as long as it's within that labor intensity ratio, those tools and materials are part of the deal. The final ingredient that enables us to unlock this power of labor is the enabling framework for action. Because CWP brings with it a mandate both from government but also from the local community to tackle local problems. It creates an enabling environment that gives a social sanction to say, we have a problem of the cattle trampling in the spring. We need to protect the drinking water from the cattle. We need to create a solution. It creates an enabling environment to tackle those kinds of very local issues that often go under the radar of the IDP or local government. In the process, it's unlocking new forms of agency and capability at the level of communities as well as amongst participants, what I would call the antithesis of dependency. At the same time, it creates a new development instrument for government. In sum, this creates a mechanism of matching the creation of work with outputs that contribute to ending poverty. It's a win-win it's a uh, solution in that sense, if you like. In the hands of communities, labor is a powerful instrument in the fight against poverty. Already the role of water, the need for water, the lack of access to water is a recurrent issue within existing areas of work, sometimes direct, sometimes indirect. We're going to hear on the panel later about uh, a focused program of river cleaning and the amazing awareness around the role of water that came as a corollary to that program, an unanticipated cor corollary. And my sense is that the issue of water, its importance in life, and the potential to use labor to unlock access to water in new ways is as yet a bit untapped within the CWP. And there's an enormous opportunity here to, to make those connections. So the challenge is to use public employment to respond to water-related challenges at community level, to raise awareness of the scope and opportunity to do so, to do so in community-driven ways, and to build partnerships to do so. Thank you.